Oh, so much to cover today because Biden lost another major debate last night. Don't know if you caught it with no opponent other than Mike Tyson of teleprompters that's knocked him out more times than Whoopi Goldberg's embarrassed herself on the witches of the view. He rambles. Uh, Trump. Trump. Yeah. He tends to just. <laughs> but uh, I mentioned. <laughs> I know. Call me immature, but you have to get some levity out of this news cycle that's out there right now. However, it turned out not to be the headline of the night, the battle with the teleprompter. Not at all. No, rather, immediately after his incoherent mumbling appearance, the Internet lit up with some speculation and rumor about something everyone had seen, but that they couldn't believe. Did you catch it? It is truly the story that keeps on giving, and that's what we're going to cover here in just two minutes. All right, my friends, before we get to the story, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please make sure you do. If you haven't gone over to Lisa Haven's channel yet, she's going to cover a different angle of a very similar story today. Love the reactions coming out of the Democrats just because it paints them in a horrible light. And I know she's going to review that today. Also, if you want to see both of us, no commercials, no interruptions on our own platform that we created to give you the news in the format you deserve beholden to no one, no advertisers, no commercials, no interruptions, just the facts, referenced, research. That platform we created for you was restrictedrepublic.com. I need you to get over there today. We're going to close this off almost permanently now. Trump 47, 299 a month, each month for three years. The window on that deal is closing. We're going to do something else here shortly. Get over there today, not tomorrow. RestrictedRepublic.com. That's your means of supporting us so we can continue to bring you the news that matters. But now let's get back to this story. So as expected, the president, known for calling Donald J. Trump a whiner, took to the stage on Monday night and complained for four minutes. Well, he whined for four minutes. In a disjointed and pitiful display of poor leadership, reminiscent of a tantrum thrown by a toddler who lost their box of crayons because their parents took it away, what we received from Joe Biden last night was misleading remarks and lies to the American people, and that's very unfortunate. He referred to the Supreme Court's ruling on Trump's absolute immunity as a terrible disservice to the people of this nation, while reiterating the president is not above the law, conveniently forgetting, of course, that he himself has ignored the Supreme Court on multiple occasions. And we're going to get there rather quickly. The president who bragged about going around a SCOTUS ruling on student loans is now worried presidents can do whatever they want to be more specific. This shamelessness is in the point itself. However, the most important details of the night reside with the teleprompter and what was missing from the speech that should have the country talking today. Did you catch it? Did you catch what everyone saw on screen? Because we're going to talk about it in greater detail. Now, who's the lying dog-faced pony soldier, I wonder? But that was just the beginning of the train wreck that we're going to cover for you in more detail. President Biden then took aim at the far-right members of the Supreme Court, especially those Trump appointed for, as he stated, gutting voter rights and civil rights, taking away a woman's right to choose, and today's decision that undermines the rule of law of this nation. So in other words... He again recited the same tired, worn out, and shameless pandering points that have been recited as much as your grandfather repeating that one time at band camp story that makes the entire family leave the fire pit and seek peace and solitude in the warm embrace of a bear and wolf infested forest. I think you get the point of what I mean. Immediately thereafter, he fires another shot across the bow in a bewildered argument by stating, my predecessor sent a violent mob to the U.S. Capitol South to peaceful transfer of power, spewing the same hate-filled, delusional, nation-dividing talking points that have become the hallmark of his administration. Let's not, never forget what Trump really said, Joe, because, again, you see the picture? Did you catch it yet? I really hope you did. We're going to point it out at the very end of this broadcast. Molly Hemingway came out before I get to what Trump really stated. In a mumbling halted reading of his needed teleprompter. 
Biden is lying about January 6th, lying about Donald Trump, and lying about what the Supreme Court ruled today. Donald Trump did state, I am asking for everyone at the U.S. Capitol to remain peaceful, no violence. Remember, we are the party of law and order, respect the law, and our great men and women in blue. Thank you. January 6th, 3, 13 p.m. Just put that back on the record. But Biden, of course, quoting directly from Justice Sotomayor's dissent, which was notably politically and perfectly tailored for today's social media soundbite nation. She stated within it, with fear for our democracy, I dissent. The word they like to use so very often, democracy. Not the great republic of the United States of America. We can get into that on multiple broadcasts, but not today. To which Biden added, added, so should the American people dissent, I dissent. Of course he did. He's dissented from everything that doesn't go his way. Would expect anything else. This elicited a strange reaction as many in the Biden orbit have been echoing strange and peculiar reactions such as Mark Elias who stated, and as captured here by Mike Benz, why are you guys so afraid of retribution? Did you like do something to him? Speaking of Donald Trump, Mark Elias' tweet was, today was a dark day for democracy. You see how they all, see how they all use it? So I want you to always notice that. And a disgraceful one for the Supreme Court. Donald Trump just didn't evade justice for January 6th. He was given a roadmap for dictatorship and retribution if he's elected in 2024, which simply means that once he gains power, he's going to do the same exact thing that we did. But now that we're not doing it, we're going to call it out and call it evading justice. Of course we are. Molly Hemingway comes back out after this amazing tweet and says Biden was only able to speak for three to four minutes and refuse questions, which I hope everyone noticed. It was a scripted presentation driven by teleprompters of which he still read end of quote as he always does. And then he quickly escorts himself off the stage to answer no questions because he doesn't want to make any mistakes. But the mainstream media, the ones, well, not the ones I'm pointing out to you who I respect, but the ones who are now complaining are the same ones that have been covering for this for months, and we can't forget that either. This is what the President of the United States of America, leader of the greatest nation in the history of the world, has reduced to. But hold on. For one minute. Pumpkin's still coming up, and you can't afford to miss it. I hope you caught that. I know. No, I didn't make a mistake. Now, before we get to the most shocking portion of the evening, let's not forget the monumental decision that has the Democrats going absolutely insane, even threatening hit squads to the SCOTUS and Trump, which Lisa's going to cover deeper. As sick and disturbing as it was, we've come to expect nothing else. The minute they don't get what they want, suddenly they do exactly what they blame everybody else for doing who actually didn't do it. That's Democrat 101. Or Republican 101, if you believe it's one big blob, which I do. So digressing, as sick and disturbing as this is, we've come to expect nothing else from the infant left that lost this ruling like they lost their binky heading into Disney World, upset there wasn't enough DEI in the Pirates of the Caribbean ride. Hope you all get that joke. I know I'm full of them today. I feel a little snarky. I think you have to in times like this when you watch what they're actually doing and how dangerous it actually is. The Supreme Court ruling on former president's immunity is significant, to say the very least. It maintains that they're immune from criminal prosecution for official acts, not non-official acts. During their tenure, this decision, in Trump's case, sends the matter back to the lower courts, likely delaying any trial related to his classified documents case until after the November election. Martin Harry stated, the U.S. Supreme Court 6-3 decides former presidents enjoy immunity from criminal prosecution for conduct involving official acts during his tenure in office. Just as former presidents have immunity from civil liabilities for official acts, they have immunity from criminal prosecution unless they are impeached and removed from office for the crime alleged. This decision is supported by the writings of the framers of the Constitution, the text of the Supreme Court, the text of the Constitution, and Supreme Court precedent. The separation of power means the judicial branch of the government, courts, cannot sit in judgment of the official acts of a president, separation of power, Special Counsel Jack Smith's prosecution of President Trump for official acts is unconstitutional, he states. And in a second, we're going to hear one of the Supreme Court justices that second that motion, if you want to state that. 
One of my other favorites, Jonathan Turley, comes out. Note this language whenever president and vice president discuss their official responsibilities. They engage in official conduct. That all but uproots Jack Smith's case entirely. Presiding over the January 6th certification proceeding at which members of Congress count the electoral votes and the constitutional and statutory duty of the vice president, the indictment's allegations that Trump attempted to pressure the vice president to take particular action in connection with his role at the certification proceeding, thus involves official conduct. Jack Smith's investigation's over. But of course, he'll never admit that. Justice Thomas, in a few seconds pushes back on even Jack Smith's appointment, which we've talked about multiple times for you before. All about this ruling coming out of the Supreme Court. It is difficult to see how the special counsel has an office established by law, quote unquote, as required by the Constitution. When the Attorney General appointed the special counsel, he did not identify any statute that clearly creates such an office. Can a private citizen litigate someone, especially an ex-president? It's a fairly easy question, of which most people know the answer for, because the friends of the court have written many briefs outlining that exact point. Justice Sotomayor, of course, dissent strongly criticizes the majority decision, arguing that it undermines the fundamental, let me see where we got this here, I know I have it somewhere, hidden within all these screenshots. Her dissent strongly criticizes the majority decision, arguing that it undermines the fundamental constitutional principle that no one, including former president, should be above the law. The dissent suggests that the court's ruling over favors Trump's claims of immunity, potentially shielding him from accountability for alleged official acts, and the whining continues. So what happens with Jack Smith's cases? They're not going to happen before the election now, if they happen at all, because the moment Trump walks into office, it will all disappear. In response to all this, Trump stated on True Social, it was a big win for our Constitution and democracy. But again, remember, orange man, bad. So after four minutes of reading off a teleprompter, isn't going to go to quiet the worries about Biden, some stated. But it's not about that. The idea that Biden couldn't speak tonight for at least 15 minutes, forget to take any questions, after countless members of the Democratic Party are on record sharing concerns about his mental fitness makes me think things are even worse than I imagined. But it's not about that either. Laying disaster upon disaster, Brian Sullivan, no, no media questions, difficult to understand, don't understand the point, because there is no point. Orange man, bad. That just took on a whole meeting last night. But you see, it's all a part about the manipulation of content, the manipulation of appearance, the manipulation of message. I know I will respect the limits of presidential power as I have for 3.5 years, but remember, he hasn't. I know I will respect the limits of the presidential power as I have for three and a half years. The Supreme Court blocked me from relieving student debt, but they didn't stop me. Pretty easy example there, huh? Really easy example, actually. But this town hall article, going back to it, stated it best. Biden shuffled out to attack the Supreme Court and everyone couldn't ignore his new appearance. You see, the funny part about that is it goes to sum up everything that's happening to Biden. So great and engaging was the mumbling president's speech that its audience, rather than commenting on one single word he stated, focused on something entirely different, something they couldn't remove from their brain, something they couldn't look away from, something so bothersome and disturbing it was all but impossible to not notice. And the reactions set off an entirely different course of action because maybe now Biden's chose a different path, a path to mirror Donald J. Trump. They bronzed him, literally, not figuratively. Something at the White House finally, somewhat the White House, finally a pride bronzer to the president. Orange man, bad. But I guess in this case, as they cover, orange man, good. The Babylon Bee had prophesied this some time ago. And what goes around comes around. Because no matter what the White House attempts to do, they simply won't be able to make him wear it better. 
What's occurred here is a complete disaster of the Biden administration, and it is now crumbling beneath their feet at such a pace they can't even step aside any longer. We knew it was there, but so many millions didn't realize it was going on. That's the most terrifying part of this entire story, and what everybody noticed last night was the man needed a teleprompter again. The man couldn't take questions Again, they're changing his appearance to make him look healthier. And all they're trying to do is shroud the simple fact of what occurred in that debate and what millions on top of millions saw. And those millions can't look away from it any longer. I love you all. Until next time, Godspeed and God bless. Justice Knight, signing out.